Right guys, um, good morning, good morning, hope you're well. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> We're here in London with a dear friend of mine, Mr. George Bamford. George, how are you? Really good to see you. <laughs> I'm so happy that you came to us. No, like, what a treat. We were meant to be at my place, but then I realized, well, two things. Um, you're super busy, and secondly, the, the number of watches. Even though we've been very clear this is a two watch collection, this is part of the two watch collection series, I knew we'd be in trouble. And you, yeah. didn't, you didn't help. You didn't help. You didn't help arriving with uh, case after case after case. No, I, I, so I, there is a two watch collection, but it's more, I want to understand about collecting and mm. this is the whole thing you and i love talking about collecting why do we like the weird and wonderful why mm. do i'm a magpie i'm not I, I, you and i kind of go against the trends quite yeah. a lot yeah 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 uh so what i want to do is show some kind of things of the the pieces that i love mm -hmm. and why i love them and you know the revolutions that happened and there's a reason why i purchased them mm -hmm. um so i kind of thought that would be a good Good way of doing you know what? And, and when we looked at it on the table, guys, it's, it's interesting because George is right. There's almost themes. There's there's periods of collecting. There's themes of collecting. And so what we've got, just to tee this up, we've got perpetual calendars. And I, I've most of these watches I've never seen before, to be clear. Oh. And we've never actually talked about a lot of these watches. We've got perpetual calendars from IWC because there's some really interesting people involved there. There's some good value to be had. Then we've got the electronic phase, the sort of quartz yes. period. Um, that you and I like. We love. We love. Because yeah. actually the designs was so funky and it's, it's interesting that those sort of 70s-ish designs yeah. haven't transferred into uh, more modern watches now. It was kind of the mixture of, of mass production and kind of handmade and I think that's what's a bit, because it was this juxtaposition all the way through. You, you, you've got some great quartz, uh, Beta 21s mm -hmm, and some mm -hmm. of those things and you and I wax lyrical about those different movements yep. but it, it is this thing of experimental um, side. You know, there was recessions happening, yep. there's some kind of things, but the brands had to do things that were crazy. Mm -hmm. That's what I loved about mm -hmm. that. So we've got we've got those two. So in many ways, it's still two, two, two watch collection, but it's, it's not two specific watches. And then just a final kicker, we've got some sort of stories here around your very early stages in, in experimenting with watches through yeah. one watch, uh, and then a Panerai that we couldn't dismiss. And then he whipped out this from Piaget, this this black tie, um, uh, also known as the Andy Warhol watch, um, which I couldn't not include. So basically, we've got we've got we've got a lot. I've got Brit behind the camera as always, who's telling us that 45 minutes is our max today. So we're going to try and get it all in for you. Um, but George, just before we kick off, I have to say I was cycling over this morning. I was thinking I've never asked you number one what the the moment was that you felt watches could be your future. Ooh. Was there a moment when you thought and you know? Did you ever envisage that this would ever be your life, ultimately, your, um, your working life? So, I'm highly dyslexic. So, Likewise. reading and writing <laughs> is not the best thing. Yes. So, so you weren't going to be an accountant? No, I was never going to be, I was always hands-on. So mm -hmm. I was always one of those people that I loved. Uh, so when I was eight, I learned how to um, uh, strip an engine, rebuild an engine. I learned how to weld, I, 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 I learned by doing mm -hmm. uh, or watching TV. Those are my two things. And w in 19, here we go, I'll, I'll tell you exactly. Uh, 1996, my parents gave me this because I used to take everything to bits at home. <laughs> so you must you, have been a nightmare kid. Oh, I, no, 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 I, I'm really sorry to say this. And I, you know, Mar and Power, I love you beyond belief, but they put a lock on the outside of my door just, just because, I, I, because I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm one of these, people that I I don't sleep much mm. uh, and I'd go down and I'd take the juicer to bits because I want to make it quicker or, I'd, I, or the VCR I'd want to work out how it worked and this is old school so it was old VHS video so I used to want to know how it would spool and what did so you get taken to doctors as well at that point when they started to try and work out what was what was wrong uh, no my parents knew I was dyslexic okay. because my, my, my <laughs> grandfather was my father was so it was it was, it was kind of like you know I, I knew I was going to be an engineer I knew I was going to be in that world um, but in 1996 my parents thought I've got an idea mm. we're gonna give you a watch and see how long it takes you to take it to bits mm. So uh, Christmas, and it says on the back, George, happy Christmas, uh, much love, Ma and Pa, 1996. <laughs> and this is the Breitling Navitimer. Yes. And, um, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. So it's, it's a vintage it, reference. It's a vintage reference. Um, now, I took this to bits on Christmas Day. Uh, by Boxing Day, it, the whole thing was in pieces on, on, a, on a, basically a towel. Mm -hmm. I'd, I had a pen knife, mm -hmm. um, a glasses screwdriver, mm -hmm. 
Um, and that was basically it. It was this goes to here, this goes... So I, I basically sectioned out the, the towel and just put things into places. I wanted to figure out how it worked. Um, is it still working? It is still working. It's been back to Breitling a few times. It's got that, a new strap. You hear that wine? That's crisp. That's crispy. Yeah. And perfectly put together. Well, no, it definitely wasn't. <laughs> definitely wasn't. Uh, if you'll notice, the hands of, are not original. Yes. Because I bent the original hands. Okay. Getting it off. Uh, I The glass has been replaced four times or five times. Okay. Um, you can see, <laughs> if you look on the back, you can see the chips, the, the, the dents of how I tried to get a pen knife in to pop off the bag. <laughs> so you can see all the, there's all the markings around each of the sides. Yeah. Where I went in quite deep. A bit like Goldberger in that talking watch video with the, the butter knife. Yeah, it or was the kind of, charcuterie knife. Yeah, trying to get it was, it, 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 it's <laughs> that kind of scenario. So that this was that watch. Um, and did, did so, you did you love the design of it? Did you think, God, this is something I want to wear one day? I, I'm I'm connecting to this thing. I mean, I, I, so it wasn't my first ever watch. My first watch was a Formula One. Okay. My first serious watch okay. was a Tag Heuer Formula One, full of luminous dial. I lost it to a girlfriend. But what I would say is this was my first. Thing where I was like, oh, this is mechanical. Mm -hmm. I, uh, okay, I can understand what that happens with that. I can understand the chrono functions. Mm -hmm. I started understanding by looking at it. Um, the other thing is, on that carpet, or on that towel, there was pieces that didn't go back into the watch when I put it back together. I was like, oh, it doesn't need this. Oh, it doesn't need this. There's a problem. <laughs> so I was like, it didn't need this. So, you know, and my watchmakers here um, always uh, say that I come along with a hammer and a chisel, and that's how I yeah. do watchmaking. I, I don't, but that's kind of... <laughs> so, but you asked about a one watch collection. Mm. That's something that will never leave the collection. Mm -hmm. It's worth nothing to anyone else. You look at it, and it, it's practically a Frankenstein because it's been replaced, everything on it. But it's mine. Mm -hmm. And I know my parents picked it up for 250 quid back mm -hmm. in the day because my father told me. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, I asked him, I said, what did you think when I took it to bits? And he just went, thank goodness you hadn't taken anything else to bits. <laughs> So that was kind you know of what, as, a, as, an, as a, an owner of a kid now, um, um, I, 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 I recognise what they were doing. They were giving you something that they thought would be really complicated that yeah. would keep you busy for as yeah. many hours as possible. It, it was my Lego. <laughs> it, was, it was my Lego, yeah. basically just sit in front, sit of, in front this of this and get it. Yeah. And at that point, and so how old were you at this point? Uh, 96, so I was probably, you're probably a bit older than, than I'm thinking. 12, 13. Okay, 12, 13. Yeah. And so at that point, you're probably not thinking about what your work could be one day. But but, no. but this planted the seed in some respect. This, this was my eureka moment yeah. of I love watches. Mm -hmm. So I started collecting watches and, and flea markets and things yeah. like that. Then I lived in New York and I started trading, um, trading watches. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to flea markets and so I'd go and buy a watch. At the beginning, so I, I went to uh, art college in, mm. in New York. I went to Parsons, yay. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I went there and on the weekends, I'd go to flea markets. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the, the term, I would have X amount of money. And I'd spend the money and I'd eat baked beans for most of the time. When, not baked beans, but it was like as cheap as I could eat. But I would, I would go and spend the money buying a watch. Mm. And then for the whole of the term, I would be trading that watch back to different flea markets mm -hmm. uh, for another watch. Mm -hmm. So I started learning about watches and then mm. I used a strap hack. Mm. So I would go to the flea market and I would strap hack another strap onto it go to another flea market and make it look good. So I'd have a great watch that week and then... The were you trading up or were you trading... I, I was trading trading bazaar. Trading so bizarre. it was bizarre. So I'd, I'd have a Silverstone or I'd, I'd, you know, next time it would be a Prowplof or it'd be... But <laughs> they're the weird things that people wouldn't touch. Gotcha. Yeah. But the things that started, you know, the Japanese call it Doki Doki, it started connecting to my heart. Mm. Um, and so that was kind of... It was never about money. It yeah. was, it, I, I know it was about money, but it wasn't about, it was about understanding watches, understanding what I could do. The chase, the people. Have you, have you seen that video? I haven't seen it, but the guy who traded a paperclip up yes. to a house. Yeah, my, my, my son, my son <laughs> just showed it. And, I was, and he goes, no, that's what I want to do in the States. I was like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's going to be hard. <laughs> no, I get it. And actually, funny enough for me, it started in markets as well. And I was on holiday, whenever I was on holiday with the folks, the first thing you'd want to do in Turkey or, or Greece was go to that market and pick up a, um, uh, I mean, unfortunately, looking back, it was like a fake Adidas or a yeah. Nike or whatever it might be. Yeah. And you cherish it for the week or a G-Shock. Yeah. Then you jump in the pool towards and the end of it and done. And done. Yeah. done and dusted, and that was it. Um, right, George, well, we've got a lot to get through. So first stage, let's dive into those perpetuals there because Kurt Klaus is a man who is still alive. He's into his, he's coming up to being into his 90s. He worked for a long time at IWC. 
Um, he also worked at uh, Langer and across yeah. Chelsea as well. He's one of the most incredibly nice guys in the world. And he invented this incredible complication for IWC, which was the perpetual calendar through the one crown. Yeah. So no pushers. Tell me how you fell in love with this so, particular model. So you've just stolen my thunder. Sorry, sorry, so you've sorry, just sorry. stolen. I want to sound like I want to sound like I know something. You've to, just to, stolen <laughs> all my thunder on this. Um, I was very lucky. I um, through Pragnals. Um, yes. Uh, back in the day, they introduced me to Kurt Klaus, um, and I'd brought a IWC, probably a Top Gun or something. There was yeah. there was a real cool, like really, like oh, hey, I'm a man. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got huge muscles. I look yeah. amazing. You know, but, I've got a Top Gun. Well, so that, that <laughs> no, but that, that was kind of why I, I was like, I've got a Top Gun watch, and I and Pragnall said, oh, you know, <laughs> we'd love to introduce you to someone, mm -hmm. and I got to meet Kurt Klaus, and he signed signed a book to me, and we chatted. I said to him, I was talking to him about different movements and things like that. And he said to me, he said, I don't understand that. The great thing is watch these IWC videos of Kurt Klaus because they are so funny because he is that person. By the way, you can also follow him on Instagram and it's the most incredibly heartwarming Instagram I've ever seen. I, don't, I think he manages it himself. Okay. He's got four or five photos. Most of them are his wife and he on trips, uh, normally cruises. And he's got the same suit. He, he has one suit that was bought for him in London. Uh, I believe at Hackett, uh, at Prince of Wales check, and he, a bit like you with your seersucker yeah. suits, he has that one suit, and he happens to be the loveliest guy in the world. Isn't he? he, 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 he exactly. Beyond nice, beyond but, nice. But he, the, as I said to him, I said, what's your frustration with the watch world? Mm. And he said, I don't understand why perpetual calendars have all these little dots all the way around them that you have to press these things. And I was just like, you're totally right. <laughs> I look at all these watches and I'm going, why? Yeah. And this is all from a big crown Perpetual calendar. Now, I'm also going to be probably bad to IWC. These aren't, they're not worth a fortune. They are worth a, but, but second hand. So I picked these up for not very much, but mm -hmm. I love them beyond belief. Precious metals. Yep. This is the ultimate for me, F you watch in some ways for an evening or a dress because the size of it is huge. It's, huge. it's 44 millimeters. It's, a, it's this, Portuguese. This came as a set, didn't it? This, this, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen this as a set at one oh, point okay. or another. Uh, but I've, we're talking I've yellow. Set, I've put the set. You've put this set together. You've got yellow gold with a black dial. Yeah. And then the sub the, the sub dial here, which is yeah. the days of the month, uh, in white, sort of yeah. contrast. Then you've got white gold. Yeah. With, with blue. The blue. And then again, the two yeah. contrasting sub dials. And then you've got platinum, with these what look huge. These sub dials yeah. just look huge. It's it, it is. But the reason that these are good value right now is because it's sort of so against the trend, yeah. right? It's against that smaller size. It's against the thinness. It's against. But still, you can't argue with the fact this is incredible innovation. It, it really fills is. the case. The whole movement, peloton winding system, and it's an IWC real kind of. It's a bulletproof watch, yeah. and I freaking I, look everything about it. The perpetual calendar for me is one of those. If if I really want to have something that is what I call a dress watch, something that is the different to a dress watch. And that's the other thing. So mm. I can go to you and say, the Piaget black tie is called a dress watch, yep. but I wear that with these clothes. Yes. I wear it with a hoodie and t-shirt yes. because for me, I love it with something that is a contradiction. That from the perpetual calendar is the, same. Is the other juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. That you'd think, hey, I'm, I'm gonna wear it out or I'm gonna be, I love that, wearing it, when you're really, really smart, a suit or whatever, mm, 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 mm. and you have a perfect calendar mm. on, because the size, the whole thing, it just is so different. And I kind of love it. I, 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 I do as well. Um, yeah, geez, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I haven't handled one for so long, and it's, it just reminds you of how good it actually is. The thing is, I was in IWC the other day, we were filming a live stream, and it oh. struck me, it struck me, that, and by, the, by all accounts, it was the first brand ever to do a, a live stream across different oh, platform, wow. which was quite interesting. Um, don't know how successful it was, but I enjoyed it, that's for sure. But what, what hit me, George, was I actually sat there in the manufacturing, and I was like, I, it's taken me years of, of being around IWC to fully understand what the brand is. Each of these brands is something very different. Yeah. IWC is about producing really solid watch yeah. watches. It's not about the finishing. Yeah. You look at the finishing, there isn't a great deal of, uh, well, there isn't any hand finishing on that movement at all. Yeah. But this thing is rock solid, well, rock solid. You, you're totally right. It comes in a raw bar. Yes. And goes Good. all the way through to a manufactured remove, a watch. And the thing is, we're lucky to go and see the manufacturers. But what I love about IWC is, 
they stand behind it. There's no hiding. No, there. no. And it really is, you know, when they're doing it, they do it. Like I, I, everyone keeps asking me about the engineer, and I'm, I'm like, I'm obsessed with the engineer. But the new one, they've spent ages Just manufacturing each bit, mm -hmm. every permutation. <laughs> they've got it right. Which colour did you like immediately? Black dog. Black dog. Black dial. Hide you down as turquoise immediately, or the aqua, sorry, they call it the aqua. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, no, I, I black dial, and I, and I like the titanium, but I like the black dial, and I would have preferred it in the titanium. Okay. So anyway, okay. that, that's my, my two cents. Okay. Um, but, Kurt Klaus, IWC, engineer. Rock solid watch, you handle that. And we're talking, we're talking prices. It's just worth noting that, you know, some of these on the secondary market, what, between 13 and 18,000 pounds, maybe? If that. It, buckle, deployment buckle, um, it's no, just... I have strap tacked all of them, so okay. they came with age straps and things like that. So I've, I've I've put new straps on. But the thing I would say to you is, I've been picking these up. These have been my kind of like any auctions or anything that comes mm -hmm. up. They're always below, yeah. and I'm sad because. The, but, but but this might come back one day. You know, the funny oh, yeah. thing about watchmaker, you've seen it over the years, yeah. is that the, the cycles that go on. We're just not in a cycle where there's an appreciation for that. Um, but that's good for me. But that's great. Or for you. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> but, now, you know, interestingly enough, it, it, uh, forgive me for, for interrupting, it, what, what is interesting now to a lot of collectors, and I think increasingly so, yeah. is this realm of, say, vintage Omega and vintage Hoya, and again, we've got IWC there, but all, all, all quartz battery-powered watches. Um, why is that, George? Why is that? Are we <sighs> wanting to be different now? Is that the thing, right? The social and... and I don't know. I look. I, I. I. I love. I love this kind of um, quartz movement, uh, digital quartz movements. Uh, Tell me that was not sexy. No, that, titanium case. You, that was so that these That's were these were kind of they were bund watches. Yeah. But, uh, and there's only X amount of them that came out, and I loved this one because when I found it, I was like, hey, you know, Eureka, I've got something unusual. They're worth not much, but mm -hmm. I love these type of watches. The Omega as well, the, um, the uh, Omega Speedmaster that's a digital dial. I love the, the weird ones that kind of, you know, that looks like, you know, you, if you put Casio on that, it would mm. be like, oh mm. yeah, that's a Casio, mm. but it, no, it's an Omega. Did, did it take you some time to find that? Uh, where did, where did this, that come from? this one, um, that was, uh, I can't, no, that was from Japan. I mm. saw it in Japan and I was Great just like, size for that market. Uh, and, <laughs> and the other one, so this one I found uh, from a great uh, watch dealer. Um, he sent me a message and said, George, I've got something that I don't know if I could sell. And I was like, <laughs> I want to buy it. <laughs> so he's like, at look at the way that's set it's, there. It, it's, it's a bizarre so, case. The whole thing is, is bizarre, but. When you put it on and you wear it for a Hoya event or something, everyone oh, goes, oh my God, can I look at that? Mm. And the thing is, it's not about a show off watch. The, you know, I didn't, it didn't cost me a fortune, but no. they are their kind of thing. Kentucky, you know, this is, um, this for me, the horseshoe shaped, mm -hmm. ugly watch, you know. Uh, that Nick, is a fugly looking watch. So Nick, Nick Fowkes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fugly looking watch. So it's a horseshoe. It's bizarre. So and the way I can see it here, the way yeah. it curves into the But into you the think case. of, so this is when we were talking about the engineering that was this cusp of mass market pressing cases, all those things. Mm. And you talk about hand finishing all those things. This is the cusp. This is when it started to kind of move over and kind of go into, hey, we can do weird and wonderful shapes. Mm. Um, but even Useful down, bracelet though. What I would say is that bracelet is a but, but then there's a pin. To take, so to lock your bracelet, <laughs> there's a pin. I, it, it is the most bizarre watch. Now I wore this uh, at an event, and Nick Fox was there, and he goes, "That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen." And I and and, <laughs> and I really. You talking about your face or the suit or the or all three oh, and the watch? F off. <laughs> uh, no, but it was actually quite an interesting thing because he he said to me, he said. When you look at it, it is ugly, mm. but there is something that makes people go and have a look at it. Mm, mm. And that's what the thing is. Most people haven't seen it. No. And they so were the Hoya Kentucky. 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 And they had and, Manhattan. And, and, and there's a riveted badge there. That says Hoya on it. <laughs> I mean, like, the whole thing is a bit crazy, but I kind of go to you and say, there's something mm. weird and wonderful. Mm. You think about this. Mm. This was when Hoya needed a punch above its weight. It did some quite crazy watches just to kind of make people go, oh yeah, I may buy that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably incredibly comfortable to wear, just looking at the shape of the bracelet and the size. Do you mind if I... 
and it's oh, I love that tinny, that old steel. Yeah. It's it, it's it's a. Uh... Oh, there you go. That's the. He called it fugly. I called it fugly a minute ago, but you know sometimes you've got to be open to change. Um, I would say that, that, but that's a good point. You've got to try these things on yeah. until you actually try it on. You never know. I always say it because it's so true. That's, but it's, that's but fantastic. it's also what suits you. No, it's true. And, it's got to be with you. It's got to be you. So when we talk about quartz, so I, I <laughs> so you 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 stole my thunder again because I was going to go from IWC to IWC and talk about something that um, there's a, a great friend of ours called mm. James Dowling. Mm -hmm. So James Dowling is kind of Mister Knowledge on a lot of things, um, and he is an absolutely amazing person. He loves quartz watches, interestingly. Yeah. You know, so, like us, but for a man who spent what, the best part of 30, 40 years yeah. in the industry, so, it doesn't feel like Quartz loses any of that soul yeah. in a watch, which is interesting, I think. So him and I did a podcast on Beta 21s, mm. and he brought every type of Beta 21. And there was one in there, and I was like, it's, you know, and with, with James, you can understand if he's going to sell or not sell. <laughs> And he he went to his, and we were talking about all these things. And this is an IWC, um, and it's sterling silver. Mm -hmm. So it's a very unusual material for a watch being made in sterling silver. Mm -hmm. But I can't point out many that have made in sterling silver. It's a Beta 21, but the the strap is almost feeling like it's going through the case. It's a very big case, big. Um, uh, Looks like a disco volante almost. Yeah. It's a flying saucer. Well, big, bigger though, bigger and thicker. Exactly. Or Snowdrop from Jaeger mm -hmm. It has mm -hmm. that kind of, you know, I, 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 I love the Snowdrop, and I was going to bring a Snowdrop today, but then I was just. But what I loved about it is Beta Twenty One. It's very unusual. James assures me, but <laughs> I, I would say I don't know. He assures me there's only two in the world or three in the world. It's I, said, I, I went to the guys at IWC and they said, well, we haven't really seen one. So David, I, David, did you speak to David Seifert, though, yeah. the museum curator? Yeah, good man. Good so, man. Does uh, it have that humming to it, that Beta 21 it hum does. to it? And we took the movement out, and when you see the movement, it, it vibrates in such a beautiful way. Um, but when we're talking about an ugly watch, mm. I brought this. What did your wife think of that? You're stealing my thunder again! Just tell me, just tell me, George. she hates it, doesn't she? So I brought it, it and arrived home, and my wife just went, what the beep have you got? <laughs> and Probably the first time she said that to you, surely. Well, no, but this was one of those, <laughs> and it, honestly, thank you, James, it didn't cost a fortune. Mm -hmm. But what I love about it is, it's a very unusual dial, it's an mm. unusual watch. Now that dial, dial actually, I've got to say. No, but that dial is very similar to the watch that you and I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got it in black, I've got it in steel. Yes. It's the same type of dial on mm -hmm. that. It is an ugly watch, but I love, I love, like James changed the strap and I love the strap because it's just a bit of a weird strap. How does it actually fit in there? Just, does, it, does it just flow so, through so the base? To, you have to undo the back, the whole thing pops pops away. It, it's, it's a very unusual watch. But it's so beautiful because it, it, it's very reminiscent of this quartz movement. Quartz, you know, I, I, I have such a love affair with quartz. Why? Because it decimated the watch world. Thanks to Swatch and Hayek mm. that he resurged the watch world. But quartz really did precision. Mm. When the Swiss watch and the UK watch world and everyone was talking about, we've got a watch that's precision. And then Quartz came along and really gave you precision. Mm. That was one of those things that changed the perspective. Now, you have to respect it. You have to look at the past to, to, to understand the future. But when you understand and you respect Quartz, you then go, OK, you have to respect Quartz. You know, and everyone goes, oh, why would you buy a Quartz swap? What would you, why would you do it? And, you know, they're, they're worth nothing. They're, they're the... Well, you turn up with one today. <laughs> yes. And... <laughs> And this is from a brand that everyone goes, oh my God, they are a super brand. Yeah. And they've got a quartz movement. Yeah. So what I would say to you is that's a brand that's respecting mm -hmm. the past mm -hmm. and saying, we're going to revolutionize it. The, the way the finishing on the back And of add it, some value in that sense. You know, and they really have uh, this. Honored, honored it, honored it. They really have. Now that's where, if you're a watch collector, and I'm talking to Justin, all of your watch collectors, and probably my mother that's watching this because she's probably <laughs> the only person who will watch. She's on commenting. My she's the only one commenting. Um, on me. <laughs> but no, uh, on the uh, on this, yeah. I I totally, you know, from a brand, yeah. 
you know, it's FP John, mm. knocking it out of the park. Mm. Everyone goes, oh. Mm. You know, crescendo, the, you know, all of this kind of music goes and everything. <laughs> and then they do a course. Yeah. And they yeah. do a course and they drop the mic on course. Yeah. You know, the Beta 21 was was that the Swiss watch world coming together mm. and saying we're tackling. Well, well, that's interesting for anyone who, who's watching who doesn't know anything about the Beta 21 movement. That's interesting because that was a collaborative effort between oh, yeah. lots of brands. Piaget were in it, IWC were in it, Patek, um, Patek um, Rolex. Rolex. Um, so do there a bit was, of digging on that. because it's other brands as well. There's some weird brands that, I mean, when I was doing this Beta 21 move, uh, talk, it was a table like this. Full of Beta 21. And because the, the movement itself was quite big, a lot of the cases were quite big. Yeah. Piaget was the only one that went off piste a yeah. little bit with this sort of rectangular shape. Um, but that was the, the industry coming together. Or uh, Patek doing with, Tabulation Dial. Yeah, and the, yeah, the big one, yeah, yeah, oh, true. And that was the coolest thing. I saw it on a lady's watch this weekend and on her wrist, wrist. and I was just like, this was so freaking cool. And the bracelets at the time oh. were just something else, something but, else. But because these things, now the weird side of this is, just think of quartz now. We see it as almost muck, mm. but when it first came out, mm -hmm. these were the highest expensive watches. Mm. The Pateks were twice as much as any other Patek. The, the IWCs were twice as much, precious materials. Mm -hmm. These things were seen as God's kind of timing units. Yeah. You know, you'd fly on Concorde and you'd have a Beta 21. That was kind of your your type of world, your raison d'etre is like <laughs> you would have something that would be, because you were that precision on time. Yeah. And that for me was kind of a crazy. But do you know what, George? It, it, and that's a very, very important point to note, the pricing at the time. But the things have changed. I think people are more approach, they're, they're more open to courts now. Yeah. And the cool thing about these models is that they are speaking to the theme and trend that we see out there now for shaped watches, sure. unusual shapes, unusual designs, more, more, you know, they're not dressy, these ones here particularly, but, you know, open to being yeah. dressed. We've got the casket. And then we've got the casket. Yeah, sorry, go on. That's, 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 that's so that was reissued from GP, from Giro Pogo, what, two years ago now? So I, I so this is my obsession, this is a GP casket. Uh, I've now gone into a company called Nipro. I'm obsessed with a brand called Nipro that was one of the early people that did these digital displays. Yeah, yeah. There's one um, coming back, actually, I've been invited to for Watches and Wonders this year from a small brand who seemed to have the same design. Yeah. <laughs> exact same design, I don't know. So, but um, GP came out with the Casket. It's one of the coolest digital watches, side display for racing and mm -hmm. racing. Um, and so I got the call from my friends at GP saying, um, we want to do something for uh, Only Watch. Mm. Um, and you've got six weeks to make a forged carbon and titanium case. So we did one mm -hmm. and we made a special box. And, and so, uh, uh, but we actually did this watch uh, in six weeks we, and they, they created the movement. But we 3D scanned my original one. Mm. And I stopped everyone on my team and we spent six weeks creating this case mm. and making it right. And even down to all the serial numbers on and, the on and, the. Post. And that was the preamp. Sorry, now you say it. I, I can remember when that press release got sent to yeah. me and I, I messaged you and, and yeah. them and immediately said, we need to see this again. And that was the preamp to the reissue, right? Yeah. So that teed everything up. So, uh, but I w it was one of the things after we'd done um, the Laureato Ghost, um, GP was like, hey, what should we do next? Mm. And and I was like, yay, <laughs> casket! And they're like, yeah, just shut up. <laughs> and then the only watch came along and, mm -hmm. and it was like, and I was so happy to be mm. a part of that collection. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was one of those things. Because what I want to show you. What you got? Oh, you've got the box. Oh, so this fantastic. is the original box for the GP, mm. uh, for the only watch. Mm. Now, why I say it is because you can tell us here is the prototype because the box is a little bit, but that is... <laughs> yeah, there it is. So I'm showing you something else. So you can see that's the that was the prototype. Let's talk uh, Panerai because to close, we're going to do Panerai in this watch and we're going to talk about Piaget because I think there's a lot to discuss around what we love in both and these the brands. Oh God, and the Monica. Shit, sorry, forgive me. What is this, George? I, I've never handled one of these before, and I've got an idea, but I don't know the full story. So I, I, I'm going to tell you a little story about watch collecting. Is wherever you go and go and discover watches, all watch dealers will have something special in their back of their safe, in the bottom of the safe. They'll be, and there was a, a great watch dealer that is a good friend of mine, and they, they're 
They're, they were on Bond Street, they, they're now back on Bond Street, but they were moving office. And the day that they were moving office, I went and saw them. And I said, oh, I, I, you know, I'm insured, I'll, I'll, I'll help bring your watches from there to there. And there was this little yellow box in the back of their safe with a swing tag that said, I think it's six and a half thousand pounds. And I was like, oh. And I said to them, I said, okay, when you move into that office, uh, into your new shop, um, I want to buy that. And they went, great, that'll be our first purchase. And I said, it's a lucky purchase, let's do a lucky you purchase. You don't know what's in there though, you've just seen the box. No, I'm, I, I'm because I opened You've had it. a little play around. No, I, cause I, <laughs> but, but it was nice to go and see in the back of the thing, and there's this little yellow box, and I, and, and I, I saw just this case. Okay. with a very shitty strap on it mm -hmm. and it's a proper the original Panerai strap and I was like that's really cool mm. it's Panerai with a very unusual movement so uh, <laughs> so this is a Rolex movement yeah oh god uh, that's the sub ring yeah I'll, I'll grab that <laughs> so but what's amazing is when you look at all the stamps, you mm -hmm. look at everything. Mm -hmm. So movement's done there, but even down to, if you look at the stamping there. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. So it's, it's all Rolex stuff. So what I loved about this was this was one of those watches. This is Panerai, this was a, um, uh, and then we traced it back and it was a Navy person that had this as their watch. It was one of those, I had to put another strap on it because I wear it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and uh, this morning I had to take off the back just so I could show you. But what I loved about it was, it, if you didn't know, you know the shape of a pan line, but you could go, okay, well that, that could be worth nothing. Or mm. And I was like, this is so freaking cool. Mm. Then I went to a, um, there's a uh, German watch fairs, um, and I went and found the torch, the the compass, the altimeter, the the dagger, that all came because they all used to come as sets. sets. Mm. So it's not the perfect set, but I I just I went and picked off mm. some of the sets, mm. and I just love the idea <laughs> that this came as a set. I love the the oranging of the luminous. I loved mm. how this is, and for me, this is one of those watches that it do, most people think it's a knackered kind of I don't know. Um, whatever watch it, it, you know it could be even a, a bigger Camaro type style it could look like a Hoya Camaro but or people might think it's a more modern Panerai because yeah. you know the modern stuff does tend to have that sort of Fotina going yeah. on the dial so but, but immediately but I was, no branding no nothing on the dial no branding and that's what I loved about it and I and you can even I see that case. Look at but, the shape but look at the crystal how damaged it is underneath no, no, it's just incredible. So, so the message really is take the time to go and and, and sniff around and discover. discover. But discover what you like. You like, yeah. And don't care about the value. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I, 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 it sounds bizarre. You, From my Crystal Palace, I can say, oh, you know, don't care about the value. But it's more, if it goes up or if it goes down, just think about Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. You know, he is in a stock for life That's almost. Yeah. He, he keeps on going, keeps on going. If you love it, mm -hmm. At some point, it will be worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. At some point, it will be worth nothing. Mm -hmm. You think about bubble backs from Rolex or something. Mm -hmm. They're worth nothing. But when they, when people were collecting them a few years ago, and then, wow, these are amazing yeah. now, you know, or, or whatever it is. Well, it's an interesting point because Panerai now, I would be, I, I would consider, to be something that people aren't particularly yeah. engaged with, even though the numbers, friendly enough, from that report would suggest yeah. otherwise. Because Panerai has seen some yeah. growth in the last few years. But you I, know, I, it, it was a bit of a Scooby Doo like. Oh, oh. Yeah, I think it's an uptick of two or yeah. three percent over the last five years. We're talking about a story which um, Rob Corder wrote for Watch Pro recently. Great, great, great story. story about you know these figures that come out for the Swiss watch world and, and the performance of different brands. But Panerai, generally speaking, because of their size, yeah. because of we talked before, the fact they're quite limited to their two K shapes, yeah. they haven't really put, you know set people alight like they did say a decade ago. What, what, what can they do, George? What, what, well, well, to start with, what would you be buying from them, maybe, that's good value um, in the secondary market? Now? So what, I, what I, I loved when they brought out the Carbotech and some of those kind of things, I think the future of the technologies, when they really experimented, like with Jaeger Lacucha when they did the master compressors and things mm. like that, there was a push on technology and a push on material. I look at Panerai and you think of Richemont as a brand, the access to new technologies, 
I think that could be the most exciting. Could you imagine? You know, when they brought out, um, I think it was a Ra uh, Loon and Radomir. When they brought out a Radomir that was entertaining, I think it was Radomir. Yes, it was. And I saw it, and it was light, and the whole thing was an exercise in, in weight. Mm. And the strap weighed more than the case. Mm. I always thought that was great. Mm. I thought, why are we not seeing this kind of? Could you imagine if Richard Mill and Panerai had a baby and it was a new Panerai? Mm. That would be really cool. Guys, it? what would you like to see? Because George and I were riffing on this before we started. What would the new case shape for Panerai, the third baby in the trio for Panerai, what could it be? I mean, that would be really interesting. It, it, it would be... What I, would you want to see? I mean, well, that would, that, you'd want something... But saying that, they've done a, they did a new case. Mm -hmm. They did one for Ferrari back in the day. You can pick these up for nothing. And the duo, 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 the thinner, yeah. the thinner version, which yeah. was always a bit weird to see a dress, yeah. like a, a dive watch that they've sort of adapted to be more of a dress watch. It's a bit weird. It's it a bit was, weird. It, it, but the thing <laughs> is, does it? I always loved the chronograph version, though. I loved, mm -hmm. I loved when they they pushed the, the thing. I, I I think they were very very good when they did the Egyptian and some of the old mm -hmm. vintage ones. Mm -hmm. They made really big and really small. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, I, I don't know, I, you have this massive respect for Panerai because, and the Paneristes are so cool. Mm. And that's the great thing. So I will also say to you is, I can't tell you what I'd do at Panerai because I, I, I'm not in that feat and, and he's an ultimate dude. So I'm just like, this. but what I'd say is communities mm. on each of these things. Mm. Forget about there's two of the major brands in the world, their communities, I'm really sorry guys, I, aren't the best in the world. They're not supportive, they're very much, they want to criticize everyone else. But the Paneristes, the Breitling team, yep. the Hoyer collectors, all of these people, Omega I think is exactly the same, mm -hmm. the Speedy Tuesday community. Mm -hmm. These are communities that lift you up. Mm -hmm. They say, like, you know, someone would point out, the bright thing I showed you, the hands are wrong, the this is wrong, or whatever. And that happened to me. So I, I had a um, bullhead uh, Breitling. I loved it. I picked it up and I was like, this is cool. And on the one of the forum, or one of the Breitling communities, they said, um, hands are wrong. And I got a message from the head of Breitling Archive, and this is where I'd say to you the connection with the brand. And he said, George, I'm sending you your hands. <clears throat> That's a pat That's on your back. It's saying, mm -hmm. these are the right hands. Instead of where most of the things where they go, hands are wrong, it's now worth nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just said, don't worry, George, I'm going to give you the hands. Do you know the really interesting thing there for me is Breitling have done a great job of engaging with that community. Yeah. Panrai, I don't know if they have or not, but Panrai would do a pretty good job by going out to, to the community yeah. and saying, guys, come and work with us and be involved well, the in the process. Do the Paneristes yeah. would be, I know they've done collaborations with yeah. them in the past, but getting someone in who's hardcore, a bit like that Breitling did with or them. Or Omega with Speedy Tuesday. Yep. You know, the guy from Hidinki used to be the vintage guy. In Fred. F f oh, sorry. Yeah, is it Fred? Is it Fred? Yeah. Right. He joined them, and yeah. you know, Panerai could. That would be really interesting. But then again, we don't want we don't want reissues. I don't think from no. the past. You want some thinking into the future as to. Well, that's what, what I'm saying. Technology. When yeah. I look at materials, yeah. when I look at where you know where we could go on technology, mm. I look at the materials on that, and I mm. think, and that's you know, people will go shock horror. But you think about Hublot every morning wakes up and goes, "How can we be different?" On materials or anything, you know. Andrew, Andrew's not here to defend. Uh, no, no, but, no, but <laughs> you think about the when I said to you about Richard Mill or Hublot or any of these things. Yeah, they really are technology-driven businesses. What I mean, the material technology, yeah, yeah. or technical, or the yeah, and and, and but the movements. Honestly, if you look at some of the movements, a lot of people. That's the secondary thing. It's about the weight, or it's about the, design, yeah. the design, or this or that. You know, you look at it, and first, it's a visual thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if I look at Panerai at the moment, it's the visual is there. It's a big block watch, mm -hmm. but it, it needs to have something where it's not. Oh, let's throw a tourbillon on it. Because for me, it, mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think we're in that world. No. I think it is very much. Why can't we? A Panerai shouldn't be heavy on the wrist. Mm -hmm. A Panerai should be on my wrist and it should be on my wife's wrist. Mm -hmm. That's where I look at it and mm -hmm. think that would be the coolest thing is do something that everyone goes, wow. Mm -hmm. and uh, But not recycled titanium because I thought that was interesting. But, you know, go go aerospace, go, um, 
I don't know, superconductor. Go move steps to move something. That's where I, because then people go, wow. When they brought out the bronze, yeah. everyone wanted to get the bronze, but then they did 20 versions of it. Yeah, that was cool. And it's kind of like, do it and then go, Hey, we, and then we, you know. They, they also need a new social media manager because I think they've got some issues with what they share and then the commentary underneath and whether it's legit and all that. That's a side note. But talking design, which I tell you a brand who does get design and who seems to be going from strength to strength at the moment, Piaget. I mean, where have they come from? They've come from, it's like watching the Grand National and seeing that outsider come at the oh, last. Oh, they, they are on fire. They're on fire. What's going on there? I, I mean, mean, this is. But this then, is... And then bringing out that Piaget Polo again. Did you get a. You, the gold one? Yeah, no, 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 no. I know. Okay. Oh, I, I, no. <laughs> but, but, but nonetheless, they are designed for Honestly, through. it's. Uh, I have a threshold that I would uh, that I would sit on okay. price, and I never buy anything above a threshold. Okay. Same with pocket watches, with trainers, yeah. with anything. It's an there's, expensive there's, watch. There's, there's it's an all expensive watch. high prices that I look at, and I'll have a top end. Cars, exactly the same. I'll have a top end that I'll spend and nothing more. And that Piaget went. But this, for me, I was so lucky to get this watch. This is a Piaget Polo black tie, uh, rose gold, uh, or yellow rose gold. Um, it is an interesting hue, isn't it? It's not, it's, it's, it's certainly not a rose, like a punchy yeah. modern rose, it's, and it's not yellow. But for me, I love this, and I love Piaget. When we talk about secondhand watches at the moment, and vintage, go and look at Piaget. They're undervalued still to this day, and you get some amazing, amazing stuff, amazing you shapes. You know, stone dials, stone dials, yeah. design. You get some really cool, ultra thin movement yeah. making. I mean, let's I, not forget these guys. As much as people associate them as a jewelry brand, yeah. along with a couple of other brands that we seem to get sucked into in that sense, uh, Louis Vuitton, yeah. Chanel, and others, they're making some crazy yeah. watches. But these guys have always done ultra thin watch yeah. making and sold and, to other brands. And the thing is that yes, Richard Mill stole their thunder on the ultra ultra thin, but they. They had the Alta Plano, yeah. That, that. And when I saw that in the, in the flesh and Incredible. got to play with it, I was like, that is, you don't need a screw for the top of it. It's, it works like a normal watch. That is a watch that I tried on recently, second hand actually, 38 millimeters. It's, it's, it's something, but and very, very, very reasonable value. And, and wearable, anyway. So that, <laughs> where I say, CEO going well. No, but, no, but also CEO. We talked about earlier, before all of this, we talked about some CEOs. Mm -hmm. When you look at Benjamin mm. and how, what he is doing as mm. a CEO, he is really, you see on their team, who he's hired, what he's done, it's a vision, mm. and the vision is happening. Mm. Even how they showed that at Watch Them Wonders. Well, of course, I watched it was Wonders. in the it, quiet it, room. Yeah. No, but you need to, to yeah. know, no, it no. was like, you were in the VIP room of the VIP room of the VIP room. When I first saw it, it was a series of that Piaget will commission, and I'm in the process of trying to, to sort one out myself. Um, they will commission a, a, a black tie for you in in, in any form you want, color wise, dial wise, stone wise, and a, an Italian collector, Davide Parmigiani, yeah. dealer, and what, what, one of the most amazing gentlemen, and his son is amazing as well. Yeah. They, he he commissioned ten or so of these, and anyway. Incredible. But Piaget, we think they're going strong. I, I they're going to have a good year this year. It's their I, 150th anniversary this year. I, I, look, I think they're on fire, but I think it's also they've got a very good team there. Yes. And, you know, if you think about Richemont, it, that pillar of Richemont is they, what, what's been amazing is as a group, they've really highlighted some amazing CEOs and said, go and do you. Mm. And you see that, and we talked about IWC earlier, but you look at Piaget, mm -hmm. it is happening. Cartier, Jesus Christ. Right. Vacheron. Uh, Vacheron, you know, they're now coming at this. They, yeah, Cartier, in fact, we haven't talked Cartier at all. They keep on going, boom. Yeah. No, I didn't, I, I brought a Cartier, but you said no, so <laughs> I was like. Okay. Oh yeah, we got a JLC signed Cartier. Um, George, right, last one before we before we let everyone go. So. A Triple theme, X. yeah. Which, which I guess this is this is a this is a personal watch to you. Yeah. Give us a brief on what that is. So, if I said to you, you asked me about a two watch collection. There's actually two watches that would never leave my collection, I, and it's the most bizarre thing. One of them is the Breitling. The other one is this. Mm -hmm. This was the change in my business. This was the this was the announcement to the world that we are officially working with a brand at Basel World. We launched this watch. This was design. This was my kind of like 
vision of what I'd love a Monaco to be. So I was with Jean-Claude Beaver, and before this was, we were working with uh, Zenith, so I had a Zenith to talk on for this. Mm -hmm. And I went, and Jean-Claude said, what would you like as a Monaco? I said, I'd love a forged car in Monaco. And he went, done. <laughs> and I went, what? <laughs> And I said, well, I'd love a forged carbon, I'd love it with aqua blue, and I'd love the subdials to pop. And, and everyone's heard the story a million times. If you haven't, you'd be able to Google it. But <laughs> this was the watch that the head of marketing at the time uh, for the Basel wa world, we were standing in the back and we were about to come on stage. And she said, here, put this on your wrist. So I'd seen some photographs, I'd approved the photographs, but I'd never seen it in the flesh. So they kept it and kept it. I was like, please, guys, before the event. And how long before was this conversation with Jean-Claude? Uh, was it a year before? So yeah, same? about uh, no, about eight, uh, no, about ten months. Ten they months. moved, they moved quickly. quickly. Okay. The thing is, when brands want to do something, yeah. they go a million miles a minute. Mm -hmm. When they're like, this will work, but let's put it into a schedule, mm -hmm. then you know it's good, mm -hmm. but it's going to fit in the slot <laughs> in this time. So anyway. The Ten months or so after that conversation, yeah. she slides that on your wrist Well, no, you because out. I'd been back and forth about how I'd want the forged carbon and all the other things. Also, the other thing is, like, if you look at this, look at the edging in the forged carbon. Mm -hmm. You look at, this is a brand that, it's got this little, you can see it here, look at that edge. Yeah. For, so they really replicated the <laughs> Monaco into this. Um, but they put it on my wrist, they gave it to me, and they said, um, what do you think? And I said, it's absolutely amazing. And there was a few things I really wanted, and they were said it can't be available, can't be available. One of them was at Banff Aqua Blue with Hoya written, instead of Tag Hoya, Hoya written there. Yeah. And so I put it on my wrist and I saw this Hoya and I was like, <laughs> You did it. I, and then it was, and they said, oh, it's a prototype, George, you are, uh, and, and I went on stage and I was like, this is absolutely amazing. But I was speechless before I got on stage. So Jean-Claude was there and put a big hug around me and I was wearing a, I don't know, black cord suit, I was trying to be chic, and I was like, hey, look, you know, and... <laughs> and You couldn't have imagined years earlier, though, no. that w with your business in customization, yeah. that you would end up at, at that point on the stage with so, a man of that kind. And it pivoted my business. Mm. To this day, it's pivoted my business. We're working with brands, mm -hmm. we're not buying from them and, and mm -hmm. they're customizing, mm -hmm. we're working in them, but watchmakers that go and uh, learn from their service people, mm -hmm. Everything is a lot more synergy. But interesting enough, George, your, your early models that you did customise, yeah. and we've seen them on videos recently, have become cult, cult collectors' yeah. pieces. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, it, but it's good that I finished them. Yeah. Um, but what was happening is Banff Aqua Blue um, mm -hmm. and this Forge Carbon, I was like, this is my ultimate. Then, um, and so the lady that gave it to me on the marketing uh, uh, said, uh, said, I went off stage, went around the whole show with this one on my wrist. I was like, I was on cloud nine. And I so left Basel. Come, come over back. No, I left Basel <laughs> World. And I was on, uh, I was just checking, just getting onto the plane. And I got this phone call from her. And she said, have you got the Monaco? Because we need it back. And I was like, um, I thought it was mine. <laughs> and anyway, so, uh, so I've kept it ever since. And the thing I, I will say to you is, on every one of the watches I've designed for a brand or been a part of the design process, um, I've always had the prototype. Mm -hmm. I've always asked for a prototype. Like with the new Bremont, this mm -hmm. is the prototype. So this was the prototype delivered to me at Christmas. And you can see it's a prototype because the, all the colors don't match up 100%. There is a few things that aren't perfect. Yeah. But I love these prototypes because what I love is you can see the evolution of where it went to production. Mm -hmm. um, that was 500 pieces, sold out very, very quickly. And either we should have gone up in price mm -hmm. or we should have done more or should have done, I don't know. It was one of those first learning curves and we should have gone back and done something else. But I'd love to, but, but but what a story, what a watch. Um, George, listen, we could be here all day. Thank you so much, my boy. And there may be a part two. If you guys want to see part two, let us know in the <laughs> in the comments. I like wondering what I can bring. Christ almighty, no, no, George, you'll be fine, boy. Um, so good to chat with you, and, and I'm sure Thank this you. year is going to be awesome. There's going to be lots lots to come. Um, it's going to be a fun year. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Got a feeling for you as well. 
I mean, like you, you, you are on fire. I mean, no, what you're. Do you know what doing? I should? Do you know what I should say? Is I should say George invited me on his podcast. It was our second chat yeah. on the podcast recently. Yeah. If you've not downloaded it, you've got to download it. And we had such a good chat. And I'd never talked about some of the early years of yeah. getting into this, and had so many nice messages from people saying. It's, it was you, such you, a you were what flipping yeah. burgers, you were selling cigarettes, yeah. you were all these things from the past that I'd never talked about. And so thank you for having me on. And well, this is yeah, this has been an absolute joy. So I, I feel like you and I have gone down memory lane on a few things, but thank you very much. You rock. Thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs>